boys and girls of grade five, and welcome to another English language class. Today, we will be looking at grammar concepts, some vocabulary, and a few spelling words. As I reminded you last lesson, we will be moving on to a different part of speech for our grammar section of today's class. Today, we will be looking at what we know as action words, verbs, that is. A verb is a word that tells us about an action or a state of being. Verbs describes what someone or something does or what someone or something is like. Examples of verbs may include swim, kick, play, walk, or drink. Remember, think, guess, forget, and see are also verbs. Less commonly, verbs may include the words become, get, was, is, and keep. So, boys and girls, some verbs can either be action or non-action. Action verbs describes what a person or thing does. For example, play, write, run, cook. Non-action verbs are used to describe states of being, senses, desires, possession, emotions, and opinion. For example, need, love, am, was, or have. So let's try an exercise where we will attempt to identify the verbs within the sentences. Let's look carefully for those non-action verbs because they can be very tricky. So number one, Destra brushed the hair of the horse. Which word within that sentence tells us about an action or state of being? Definitely, brushed tells us of an action. Number two, who skipped in the yard? Definitely, skipped is our verb within that sentence. Number three, I have a pen in my hand. Which of those words tell us of an action or a state of being? So, boys and girls, I am sure you identified have. As you can see, it does not tell us of an action, but it is a non-action verb. So, let's go on to number four. We enjoyed the free digital television. Enjoyed is the verb within that sentence. And lastly, please change this book. Of the four words, which do you believe is the verb? Correct. Change refers to the action word within that sentence. However, boys and girls, there are some words that can either be a noun or a verb. So we must identify that word based on its use in the sentence. This 
can be very tricky. But here are some examples. Let's take the word bake and use it as a verb and a noun. Sally likes to bake biscuits and cookies. Sally likes to bake biscuits and cookies. Does the word bake tell us of a thing or is it telling us of an action? Definitely, you're on the right track. In this sentence, bake is an action word. Sally likes to bake tells us of the action or describes the thing that Sally is doing. So let's attempt to use bake as a noun within a sentence. Bake and salted fish is a wonderful Guyanese delicacy. So in this sentence, bake is used as a noun since it refers to an object that we eat. Let's try another. Take for example the word paint, which can be used as both a noun and a verb. Do not waste the paint. We only have one tin left. In our sentence, we're seeing that paint here refers to a noun since paint is a thing that we use to beautify our environment. Secondly, I would like to paint the old shed this weekend. In this sentence, paint is a verb since it refers to the action of painting. So let's attempt to state whether these words in the following sentences are nouns or verbs. Remember, we can only do this based on how they are used in the sentence. Number one, we watch television every evening. Boys and girls of grade five. Does the word watch in this sentence refer to a noun or a verb? Yes, it is a verb, since it refers to the action of watching. Number two states, my new watch has a golden band. Is the word watch a noun or a verb? are correct. Watch here refers to the thing that tells us time. Let's go on. She didn't drink water before going to the playground. Drink, does it refer to a thing or does it denote an action? I am sure you said verb, and that's correct. Let's go on. Number four, the meal was served with a complimentary drink. Yes, here, drink is a thing which refers to a noun. Number five, please call the manager now. Yes, boys and girls, in this sentence, call refers to a verb and denotes an action. And lastly, the man was awakened by his son's call. Is call a noun or a verb? <music> Bravo! 
brilliant. Call in this sentence is telling us of a thing. So it is therefore a noun. I hope you have enjoyed those grammar exercises. Let's move on to some vocabulary. Today's topic is idioms. I'm sure you have heard that word before, but let me tell you a bit about idioms. Idioms are phrases or expressions that are used in everyday language. They have figurative meanings since there is usually a hidden meaning which is different from the individual words. They are usually drawn from religious teachings and well-known sayings of famous persons. So let's look at some examples of idioms. If we say, to get into hot water, it does not actually mean to get into a tub of water that is steaming hot, but rather it means to get into trouble. That is what is meant when we say that idioms are figurative expressions. Let's look at another example. To let the cat out of the bag. What do you think that means? It definitely does not mean that we will let a physical cat out of a bag, but rather it means to tell a secret. Also, there's another idiom that says, to turn over a new leaf. But we're not referring to a guava or mango leaf, but rather it means to conduct or behave oneself better. What do you think these idioms mean? That idiom refers to when it's raining cats and dogs, which means that it is raining heavily. Let's look at another idiom. This idiom means to go the extra mile, which means not physically running, but that you must make a special effort. And lastly, can you guess this one? Butterflies in my stomach. Yes, that refers to someone who is feeling nervous. So boys and girls, be sure to check your new junior English revised and new first aid in English for additional idioms and their meanings. For homework, I would like for you to look up the meanings of the following idioms. Number one, to be at loose end. Number two, to be at loggerheads. Number three, to make both ends meet. Four, to take French leave. Five, to nip it in the bud. And lastly, to face the music. Before you go, let's look at this lesson's spelling list. Let's attempt to pronounce these words. Through, though, thorough, plow, tough, cough, enough, borrow, dough, rough. From observation, I'm sure you're seeing that all of those words end in O-U-G-H. Remember, to widen your vocabulary, you can find the meanings of these words in your dictionaries. Ensure you are able to spell them by our next lesson. So let's recap today's class. A verb is a word that tells us about an action or a state of being. Remember that there are action and non-action verbs. Also, some verbs can be very tricky since they can both be a noun and a verb. 
And for vocabulary, an idiom is a figurative expression used in everyday language. So that's it today for our English lesson. I'm your English teacher, Miss Melissa, and I hope that you had an enjoyable time. See you at our next lesson and continue to be safe.